them in the X. We are back with another Comsol Multiphysics tutorial. We come in the examples. This one is about the mechanics of the golf swing. We're going to use the multi body dynamics interface. Our objective of this investigation is to maximize club at speed shortly before it comes into contact with the ball. The wrist stroke, which is extremely important in optimizing the outcome of the stroke, is adjusted parametrically in order for us to examine how it affects the club head speed. We're going to assume that the torque profile is applied by different bodies. Here we have our geometry and connections. Our geometry consists of a club, grip, arm and shoulder. These links are held together by four hinge joints. Here is our table that shows all the links and they are all modeled rigid bodies. Please note that all the files needed for this tutorial is provided in the link in the description below. Let's jump over to Comsol Multi Physics and get this done. Yes, Comsol is fully loaded and ready for us to go. So let's go to the model wizard. And for the space dimension, we're going to choose 2D. And for our physics, let's go to structural mechanics. And let's go down to multi body dynamics. Click on add. Now that's added, let's go to study. And under general studies, let's click time dependent and done. Now we are going to import the parameter list that defines the mass initial properties of the linkage, joint stiffness and the maximum torque capacities as well so how do we do that we'll navigate to our global definition parameters we are going to click on load from file which is right here and we are going to navigate to where we downloaded our parameters the text file so you select that and you click open and here we imported our parameters. You can simply go through them. At least get familiarized with the, the names because you will use some of these as we go along, some of the names. Now let's go to the, the home tab and we want to click on import. And now we need to browse and we are going to browse where we have the, the geometry file. So once you download the folder provided in the description below, you will have the text files and the geometry files. So let's click the geometry file and open. And now we need to click import. And here is our geometry that we are going to work with. Let's navigate to form union and it's under geometry. So here you click on that and under the action. So here is form union assembly action. Here we click form and assembly. So once we click that, then we click build all. Let's navigate to definitions. The definitions toolbar is right here. So you click on that and let's go non-local couplings and let's select integration. And under the settings, so this is the settings for integration, we need to select here, we need 0.14. So let's go to selection. We don't have 0.14 here as yet. So we need the option to choose point. So how do we do that? We go to our geometric entity level and change from domain to point. Now we have multiple options of selecting our points. 
So let's choose point 14 and let's click add. And we are finished select selecting our point. And now let's go down to our physics. Before we manipulate our physics, we need to import our variables. So let's go over to our definitions. So we have global definitions. So let's call up our close global definitions. And on the component one, we have definitions. So right click on definitions and let's choose variables. And now that we have variables here, let's go to load from file once more and let's choose golf swing mechanics variables text file and let's import that by clicking open and here are our variables with that done we can now go down and manipulate our physics so let's right click on multi body dynamics and here let's choose a rigid domain and let's change the name to rigid domain shoulder so in the labels our label type rigid domain shoulder and we need to navigate to the selection list and let's choose the domain for add and then go back to your mother builder and now let us set the density to zero. So how do we do that? This can be done by simply going down to density. And here we have from material. We don't want that. So we're going to change this to user defined. And here we set our density to zero simple as that let's now go to our physics toolbar and under our physics toolbar we have attributes and let's select attributes attributes and let's select the mass moment initial and let's put ish there and if we navigate back to our global definitions parameters remember we imported some stuff and you can see ish is here so the parameters that we imported are the same parameters that we are going to use throughout our physics let's go back to our physics so let's just click back on rigid domain shoulder for now we are still within our physics toolbar so let's go to domain and let's choose rigid domain so it's under multi multi-body dynamics so let's click that and let's give it a name let's call it rigid domain arm and we need to select two add back to your model builder and we have to choose or change the density so density change it from material to user defined keep it at, at zero and then we need to go back to attributes and mass and moment of initial and the entity level needs to be changed to point but before we can do that we need to change from center of rotation to centroid of selected entities and now entity level we have the option to choose point and we'll change the moment of initial to ia so let's type ia and for the 
mass, let's type MA. Let's go over to our model builder window. So we have rigid domain arm. Inside of rigid domain arm, we have mass and moment of initial one, and we have center of mass point one. So click on center of mass point one, and let's go to selection list, and let's choose point eight, and click add. So let's go to domains. We are still in our physics toolbar. So let's go to domains and under multi-body dynamics, or some will say multi-body dynamics, let's click rigid domain and let's give it rigid domain grip as the name and let's go to selection list and we need our domain one, add, go back to our model builder, go down to density, from material, change that to user defined, leave the the density property as zero and we need to add an attribute so let's go to attributes and of course mass and moment of initial and we need to choose centroid of selected entities and at the entity level let's change that to point and for the mass Let's type MG and for the moment of inertia, let's type IG. And remember, you can always go back to your global definitions here, parameters, and you will see exactly what you are inputting in your physics. Okay, so let's go back to the rigid domain grip. And under our rigid domain grip, just as before, we have mass and moment initial one, and we have centroid of mass point one. So let's click on centroid of mass point one, and let's go to selection list, and let's select three, add, go back to our model builder. And now we're going to repeat a similar process for the rigid domain club. So let's go to domains, rigid domain under multi-body dynamics. And let's call this rigid domain club. And just go to selection list. So you can click here, go to selection list, and let's select domain tree, add, Go back to our model builder. Let's scroll down to our density, user define, and let's go to attributes, mass and moment of finisher. And this time we are going to make our mass and moment. So mass will be MC and moment of finisher it's going to be IC. Okay, and for the center of rotation, we're going to change that to centroid of selected entities, and of course, we need point. Okay, and we will now go to center of mass point one, and we're going to select 13 and click add. And then we go back to our model builder. Now let's create a hinge joint. And we're going to call this one hinge joint shoulder. So we are still in our physics toolbar. Let's go down to the global. And under joints, we have hinge joint. So let's select that. And we're going to do some slight manipulation to this hinge joint. Before we do that, well, our first manipulation is the name. And then our second change, we're going to select for the source, we're going to select fixed. And for the destination, we're going to choose rigid domain shoulder. 
let's expand our hinge joint shoulder it's already expanded if yours is closed we expand it by clicking the little arrow on the left and let's select center of joint boundary one and go to selection list and let's select 13 add go back to our model builder now let's go over to attributes and we're going to choose apply force and moment so as you notice all these are falling under hinge joint so you have to make sure that you are working within your hinge joint when you add in your when you're adding your attributes make sure you you select where you want it to add so if i select here thinking that because i did this last that my attribute will fall under here it won't so make sure you are working within your needed space so let's continue let's go to the up, apply it on and make some changes under apply it on here we're going to change just the joint and for the applied moment we're going to type tsh and we're going to create another hinge and this time it will be hinge joint arm just as the last time global and normally the last thing are uh, some may load in your recent so you don't have to always come down to joint you can just go to recent and click hinge joint and we're going to name this hinge joint arm and let's go down to the source and our source will be rigid domain shoulder and our destination will be rigid domain arm and let's go down to the center of joint boundary and let's select boundary 8 add that once you find your model builder start getting nasty you can simply close some of these so let's close this one let's close definitions here and close our geometry and let's close some of these domains that we created and keep you can keep the last one open okay let's click on hinge joint arm in our model builder okay and let's go to attributes and let's select spring and damper and we're going to input some equations or expression inside of our spring type so here you can pause your video and take these and let's change the damping coefficient as well the pre-deformation remains as is and that's all we need for the spring constant let's add some more attributes to our hinge joint arm so let's go back and click hinge joint arm again and let's go over to attributes and we're going to select applied force and moment and uh, apply it on let's change to joint and for the applied force and moment let's type ta ta is under definitions and if we put our variables that we imported we find ta find tsh and 
if you go over to your description it tells you what they are so tsh is the applied shoulder torque ta is the applied arm torque okay now let's add a hinge joint wrist we are still within our physics toolbar let's go to global and let's add a, a new hinge joint so you can use recent you can go down to joints and we're going to call this one hinge, hinge joint wrist wrist so here we have hinge joint wrist and let's go to the source in our settings and let's choose the rigid domain arm our destination let's make it rigid domain grip let's go down to center of joint boundary selection list and let's choose boundary one and let's click add go back and select your hinge joint wrist and we're going to add some attributes so go back to attributes under physics toolbar and let's choose spring damper and we're going to change the spring constant so let's import that equation there and also we are going to change the damping coefficient so this will be CW so this is the wrist stop damping coefficient and now let's go and add some attributes to our hinge joint wrist so let's click on hinge joint wrist in our model builder and let's go to attributes and we're going to add applied force and moment and the applied on we are working with joints so let's change that to joint and let's input tw and tw is the applied wrist torque remember if you navigate back to your your variables under definitions here you have them and the descriptions the expression and the name and also on the global definition parameters you also have some other parameters so as mentioned before these are what we are going to use are uh, what we are, have been using in our physics now let's create a hinge joint shaft and the process remains the same so let's go, go to global hinge joint and we're going to call this one hinge joint shaft and let's go down to our source our source will be rigid domain grip and our destination is the club so rigid domain club and for the center of joint boundary let's select nine and add let's go back to our model builder select hinge joint shaft and we're going to add some attributes and spring and damper and for the spring constant KS and the damping coefficient is CS. Those are the sharp joint stiffness and the sharp joint damping coefficient. And we're going to add some definitions. So we're going to navigate back to our definitions under model builder and go back to our variables and we're going to add two two set of expressions ok 
Okay, so let's add a name. Let's call that T underscore F. That's the effective arm torque. Let's put that in our description as well. And let's create one called effective wrist torque. So what you can do, you can just simply copy this one, paste it here, and then change the, the A that was for arm to W for wrist. And let's call the definition, I'll give it a definition, effective wrist torque. And now we need to put in our, the most important part, which is the expression. And this will be minus. Okay. Minus as well. Okay, so we add two extra variables to our definition variables, effective arm torque, effective wrist torque. You will see these coming into play later on in our simulation. Let's begin our study by firstly adding a parametric sweep to solve the model for different values of wrist torque switch time. So let's go to study in our toolbar and let's click on parametric sweep. And here, let's go to our parametric sweep settings and we have our study settings and let's click add here and let's enter these values you can pause the video and enter these values for the unit let's use s well it should be lowercase and for the parameter name let's choose tw wrist torque switch time so that should be here TW wrist walk switch time and we will now go to the model builder and we will click on time dependent and we will change the values for the range so you can just place these values inside of the brackets with, with those that I entered And now let's add a stop condition in the solver in order to st stop the simulation just before it make it an impact. Okay, so just before you come in reality, just before the, the club or uh, your swing, just before it comes into contact with the ball, we need to make a, a stop. Okay, so how do we do that? We need to go over to or study toolbar and we need to add a show default solver and we need to manipulate this let's navigate to our model builder and on the study we have the solver configuration and on the solver configuration we have solutions and let's click on time dependent solver and let's right click and let's select stop condition and for for this we have the stop expression let's click this plus sign to add and let's import this variable everything else is default 
and let us now go and let's use before we compute let's make another change okay so let's go to output at slap we have add solution let's change this to from no to step after stop okay and let's you click on compute in the ribbon above let's wait for this to complete now our computation is completed let's go and set up our results so we will start by first firstly let's minimize most of these things that we no longer need we don't need to study for now and let's just focus on our results so let's expand results if yours is closed well results is expanded if yours is closed you expand results we don't need to go to data sets we'll start by going to displacement so when we click on displacement it takes us to the displacement toolbar and let us click on more plots and let's add a point trajectory okay so we are more plots and let's go down to point plots and click on point trajectories and inside here we need to select the points so let's go to selection list and let's select one nine use control to select multiple entities and let's click on 14 as well and click add and let's scroll down you can go back to your mother builder let's now scroll down and we are going to change the color and style so here for the line style here for type we're going to change it from line to tube okay and that's okay and let's add a, a color expression so let's right click and point trajectory is one and let's add a color expression and for the color expression let's change this from zero to t and let's clear the color legend and let's come you can click hit plot here or you can come to your your ribbon in your displacement and hit plot and if we make this smaller and zoom to extents here is our point trajectory plot now let's generate uh, the plot of club head speed and we'll start by going home in our toolbar uh, ribbon and then we will come to add plot group so we'll select this and we'll add a 1d plot group and in the settings let's give it a name let's call it clock head speed here clock head speed and let's change our data sets we don't want study one solution we want parametric solution one salt two okay and let's go down to title let's expand our title and title type let's take off the title and therefore we need to click none and for the y axis label which is here let's select the checkbox y axis label and for the name of that let's call it club head 
and MS target speed MS okay and now let's navigate to the, the legend and need to get that we need to scroll down legend and let's change the position so let's make it to the upper left and now let's add a, a point graph so let's right click on clock at speed and let's go and add a point graph and for the point graph let's select 14 only and add that and let's make another manipulation so let's go to replace expression so for the y-axis data let's click here replace expression and let's navigate to component one and under multi bodies our uh, multi-body dynamics let's scroll down to acceleration and velocity so let's open that and let's select velocity magnitude so it will be velocity magnitude this one not that one this one M mbd that bell velocity magnitude so let's select that one you can double click on it or you can just hit enter and let's go along to the coloring style our coloring and style and let's make the line width two also let's go down to the marker and let's choose cycle and let's go down to legend and for legends let's click on show legend and let's make some changes here so we need to click on manual and we're going to enter some values here let's add this value hit enter let's make this 19 a point one nine and this one point two three okay and let's hit plot and let's hit on zoom zoom to extends let's scroll up a little bit yeah that looks that looks good this shows the club club at speed during the tongue swing for different switching times of the wrist torque okay so let's now go and add some more results let's add or generate our driving torques so let's navigate to home add plot group one the plot group and let's call this driving torques so in your label and enter driving torques let's change the data set to parametric solutions and uh, par parameter selection from list select 0.19 only for the title none and y-axis label let's give that a, a label let's call that driving torques okay and let's let's add some expression so we need to first first let's right click on driving torques global and 
for the expression so we have we have the y axis data and for the expression let's click here we're going to replace expressions i already have them here but i'm going to show you where they are so under component one let's go to definitions variables we'll find all of them under variables so let's start by adding the applied um torque so you can double click or hit enter when selected and let's go ahead and add all the rest okay so you can go in order if you like i don't think it, it matters So we add we added all the, the expressions that we need. So we have the applied arm torque, effective arm torque, we have the applied shoulder torque, we also have the applied wrist torque and the effective wrist torque. Okay. And let's now go and change the color and style. So let's go down and for the the width and the color and coloring and style the width let's make that two and the marker let's make it cycle and let's go back and click on our driving torques and for the axis here let's select manual axis limit leave the x minimum and maximum as is and for the y minus 70 and the y maximum 500 and let's hit plot so now we can see our plot more clearly if we hit zoom extend so go back to default and therefore we will have to re-enter our axis okay now let's go let's go ahead and let's add a, a relative rotation so let's minimize the clock at speed let's minimize the driving torques let's right click on driving torques and let's duplicate and let's change the name to relative rotation so make sure you click on this one the one that you now duplicated and let's make that relative rotation let's call it that and for the the y-axis label let's change the name so we need to change the name here y-axis label and the units is degrees so let's enter degrees and let's change the, the legend let me just make this a little bit smaller so this will be bigger and let's go down to legend and let's choose upper left okay and let's open the relative rotation let's click on global and for the the global let's replace the expressions in the upper right corner of the the y-axis data so let's scroll up and we're going to replace these expressions so let's click on replace expressions let's go to the multi multi body dynamics under component one let's go to the hinge joint and for the relative rotation that should be on the hinge joint arm this one should have something called relative rotation read this one and click and hit enter or just double click 
And now that we have replaced our previous expression, remember we duplicated Jeff and Trox, so we are now changing the values for relative rotation. And let's make some changes to this. But before, let's go back to, let's go to add. And let's go to alter body dynamics, hinge joints. Let's scroll down. And let's go to the joint wrist. And let's add the relative rotation, this one. This one is under joint wrist. OK. And the, the next one will come under the shaft. So let's add and multi body dynamics, hinge joint. Let's select shaft, let's scroll down and relative rotation. Okay. Now let's manipulate these. So we're going to change the, the units to degrees so you can just copy this and enter it into R and we're going to change the description so the first one will be arm joint I will start with the arm the second one will be wrist joint and the third one will be shaft joint this one so let's hit plot and see what we came up with now let's click on zoom to extent and here is our plot these are the rotations on the arm wrist and the shaft joints now we're going to plot the trajectory of the shoulder arm club the motion first for, for that the shoulder arm club so we'll do this by firstly going back home and we'll go to add plot group 1d plot group and let's give it a name shoulder arm club motion So let's put that in the, the label. Let's let's close the relative rotation. So we are going to focus on the shoulder arm club motion. Let's right click on shoulder arm club motion and let's add a line graph. And let's change the data set to parametric solutions. And from the parameter selection, let's choose from list. And let's start with 0.15. For the time selection, let's use interpolated. And for the time, we're going to add a range. Here are the values. You can pause the video and enter these. And here for the selection, come here, paste selection. Okay, and you can enter, you can enter these values: two, six, ten, and fourteen. Space between each of them. Select OK. It's similar to, to doing this. It's just another way. <laughs> and. Uh, Let's go down to the line graph. Okay. Let's make some changes to the y axis data. 
so let's scroll down y axis data we are here and let's type y for the expression and from the, the x-axis data let's go down to the x-axis data here so at the y let's open the x for the parameter let's choose expression and for the, the expression let's type x and for the, the width so go down to coloring and style the width 2 is okay and for the coloring and style the color here let's choose black okay and now let's go and add a, a point graph let's right click on our shoulder arm club motion and we're going to choose the point graph And let's choose the parametric solutions in our data sets for the parameter selection from list. And let's start with 0.15. And for the time selection, interpolated. And for the range, Let's enter these values. You can pause the video and enter those. And here for the selection, you can repeat the other way of selecting or entering your selections. So 6, 14, and 18, and click OK. And now let's go to the Y axis data. So here, let's type Y for the expression. Let's scroll down to the, the X axis. So let's cut up start and for the parameter, let's change it from time to expression and x. And let's go down to the coloring and style, the width 2. Well, let's leave the width as is and let's change the, the color. Let's change the color to red and the line type. The marker, let's use point. Let's use point for the marker and the positioning. Let's use in data points and the line so for the line style line let's choose none okay so line none function type default continuous and the color red let's leave the we don't want any width because our line is none so we do have to change the width the marker point and the position in data points and that should be good for that and now let's go and add a, another line graph okay so let's right click on our shoulder um, club motion and Okay, the best thing to do here is select line graph one. Okay, right click, duplicate, 
and let's modi modify this okay so we'll start by navigating to the parameter values and select 0.19 okay and for the the x expression so let's go down for the x expression let's select x or let's enter x plus 2.5 okay, outside there okay and now let's duplicate point graph one so right click on point graph one and duplicate so we duplicated the first one which is the line graph one and we push it to the to the right to the right is positive so when we say x plus 2.5 we are actually moving or copying this from this point to to 2.5 units to the right so we'll do a, a similar a similar a similar thing for the for these points let's do that so we already duplicated that and let's go and change the, the parameter values to 0.19 and of course the x will be the same plus 2.5 okay now let's duplicate the second line graph which is this one so right click on that and this time we'll choose the third value which is 0.23 and we're going to move five units on the x okay so they are even even space okay and let's duplicate the point graph as well again and we can just enter the five here as we are we are already at this location and let's scroll up to the parameter values and click 0.23 okay so we, we should have one two three line graphs and one two three point graphs okay and let's select plot from the Shola um, club motion toolbar and here we have our our plots now let's go to the model builder let's click on shoulder um, of motion and let's go to title title here let's take off those titles for the the X label let's select the, the box now let's give our X axis label a name and hit plot so to extends and you can see it's now displayed here for x and over y and this actually shows the trajectory of the golf club with various first talks switch times the results for the increase in values of the parameter are actually displayed from left to right now let's just close this let's go to displacement here is our displacement we can actually animate this by hitting player go to animation okay we can actually change the time and do other stuff here within the animation and also we have the, our velocity 
then it's going to extend we can repeat the same process animation player if we hit that it will do a short animation of the swing and also we have our club head speed we have our driving torques we have our relative rotation and of course our shoulder arm club motion and this concludes our simulation bye for now take care